So as we think about transforming the force or transforming air missile defense, and I was going to say thank you for making that because it was yeah, down to like a negative concerned. five. Yeah, I was concerned. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the positive. I'm doing good. Uh, when we think about transforming air missile defense, it's really from the BCT, the Brigade Combat Team, at the tactical edge all the way through what we described earlier, uh, and we, we talked about that horizontal and vertical integration with respect to range and altitude against more, more strategic threats with respect to uh, advanced cruise uh, missiles as well as tactical <coughs> ballistic missiles. Okay, so, uh, so what drives us today as a material developer? Uh, what keeps me awake at night? Uh, so at, at the PO Missiles in Space, I mean, we're focused on the Integrated Air Missile Defense Battle Command System uh, because at this, at this point in time, that is, and you heard it today, that is the air, def air missile defense community number one priority, okay? And when fielded, IBCS gives that, that combatant commander that unprecedented capability to scale that capability, to tailor it to the, to the needs of the threat, because each COCOM commander's threat requirements are different. It allows it to be flexible and allows it to be much more modular. And I think General Spielman hit, Spielman hit the uh, nail on, in, on the head this afternoon when he talked about uh, when we field today a Patriot <coughs> unit, that ICC has got to go with it. Um, and that's a, that's a very large force structure if you're trying to field a smaller fire unit capability. Uh, so all AMD programs within the PEO today uh, across our portfolio uh, with, re with respect to cruise missile defense systems, uh, the CRAM office, the lower tier side of the house, um, as well as the integrated air missile defense, we're, we're componentizing those systems. They're all on a path to converge to the Integrated Air Missile Defense Integrated Battle Command System to include the hardware and the software uh, that's designed to operate directly on that integrated fire control network. Okay, we talked about that uh, a, lot, uh, a lot earlier this morning with respect to providing that, that BCT commander and that, and that maneuver force at all echelons, that single integrated air picture and networked mission command. So it gets back into that. We talked about the common operating environment collapsing into a, a mission command that's common uh, across the AMD community. What else it, does it buy us? It buys us the ability uh, to bring any sensor, any shooter, uh, and integrate it directly on the integrated fire control network. It improves that AMD com uh, commander's ability to fight and survive in very complex operating environments. So we talked a little bit about that in a number of the briefs already today. We talked about the cyber aspect, the electromagnetic aspect. Uh, you bring in assured PNT. Uh, one of the things that we work very closely with the, the user community as well as the material development community is we have built at, at Redstone Arsenal a cybersecurity testbed, okay, where we can take uh, the, the componentized uh, AMD construct, virtualize it, and run it on that cybersecurity test bed and, and try to break it. We want to know where those seams and gaps are so we can, we can uh, better improve the design of, of that system. Uh, from an acquisition perspective, componentization also allows the U.S. to incrementally modernize the AMD hardware in a much more affordable way. Okay, rather than going after the entire system, uh, having, having served as the lower tier project uh, manager for years, we, we went out to certify software. I had to take a whole battalion set out there in essence, and, and we were certifying at a system of systems level. Now you get to a stable IMD architecture, and the driver then is the components that, then that you want to integrate. Uh, uh, they, they integrate when they're ready. Okay, and the, the IMD architecture itself, since it's, it, it's become stable, we're not worried about uh, perturba perturbations from, uh, from program to program. Uh, the commoditization also allows us, with respect to cost savings, if you think about competition, those components now, rather than going out and looking at an entire system that you're going to compete and put on that, or that uh, integrated fire control network, okay, I'm looking at components. We're focused on radars sensors. You're focused on effectors. Effectors can be either directed energy, could be kinetic energy, could be the launcher. And you're looking at, at the integrated battle command system. All of those, if you, if you really break them down into, in their, into their basics, they are components of the air missile defense construct. We work very closely with the Fire Center of Excellence, 
uh, to identify the criti critical tasks required to support the combatant commander's operational planning to define, integrate, and fight the Integrated Air Missile Defense Command System. And that is from the tactical edge of the BCT in depth across the full extent, ex extent of the tactical ballistic, uh, ballistic missile footprint at range and altitude, and we, we hit a lot of those today. We continue to work closely with industry partners. There's a lot of industry partners here today, and I've, I've, I've worked very closely with a, with a number of you over the years. Uh, we work with the Missile Defense Agency very closely because not only does this integrated air missile defense construct is, is, <coughs> an, is an Army priority, it also has to interoperate at the joint level, okay, with the ballistic missile defense system. So we're, 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 we're all very much interrelated. When it's, with respect to the joint fight, fight one of the, the things that keeps us awake at night is making sure, and we have these conversations all, uh, all the time with uh, the fire center, with Colonel O'Neill at the CDID, uh, ARCIC, uh, with respect to, to gaps analysis, is to make sure that the technical design uh, that, that we're investing in from a material development perspective supports the war fighting concept. Uh, because if it doesn't, all we're doing is we're widening the gaps Okay, and, the, and if you think about a threat vector over time, by the time we get the system out there, the threat has evolved to the next level because we haven't been paying attention. Okay, IBCS has been, pretty, is, has been tested. We went through a LUT uh, last year. Uh, we've successfully hit, uh, flown three uh, missile flight tests, one of which uh, was, was pretty complex with respect to we, an engagement with a Patriot interceptor, a PAC-3, off of Sentinel data. Who ever thought of doing that? Okay, we're, all, we're able to do that uh, with this integrate the IMD uh, Battle Command uh, System construct uh, because it's a common mission command. We took, we took uh, 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 sensor data and fused it into a composite track, okay, that all sensors that we can push back out over the integrated fire control network for all sensors to use uh, and best see the target and then pair up that weapon system with respect to the sensor and the interceptor to best kill that particular target. Patriot is on its way this year. We're, we're continuing to, to move it along uh, to its next level with respect to PDB-8. Uh, Bill talked a little bit about uh, PDB-8 and getting to the configuration three plus, the latest uh, configuration. That's gonna see its way uh, to uh, the, the peninsula much much quicker than the mainstream army because of the UMR, but much but more important than that, it, it in itself the PDB-8, which is the next level of post-deployment build software, along with the most modern hardware that we can put on the, on the ground for the componentized Patriot, does that does just that. It prepares that system to be componentized into its radar, the launcher, and interceptor to operate on that integrated fire control network. IPIC is progressing pretty well. Uh, if the integrated fire you know, protection capability increment two intercept uh, uses the inter integrated battle command system as its mission command uh, and fire control. IPIC's gonna be the first, will be the first system developed to operate on the integrated fire, fire control network and demonstrate that cap capability into an end-to-end -end missile intercept test conducted <coughs> last March. Think about it, and it was in its, uh, technology maturation and risk reduction phase of the program. Yet, uh, because of where, because where IBCS was at the time and our ability to integrate the, these modular components, the multi-mission launcher, which is the primarily new development, the AIM-9X missile, the Sentinel radar, and the integrated battle command system software, we are able to conduct an end-to-end -end test in an IBCS environment with five different interceptors, and we killed two different targets. Okay, cruise missiles and counter UAS. Significant event in TMRR. It's unprecedented. Lower tier air missile defense sensor and will operate as a sensor component within the Army integrated air missile defense architecture supporting the joint coalition strategic assets and protection against those TBMs, cruise missiles, and air breathing threats. The Army will continue uh, to, to press the, the AMB transformation while supporting the lines of effort identified by General Dickinson this morning, uh, and to fight as a federated system until the AMD, those AMD sy uh, uh, systems, Patriot, Sentinel, uh, and the air defense airspace management cells are componentized during that transition and fueling to the 
integrated battle command system.